So alhamdulillah, salah, salam wa rasulillah. We're talking about living legacy. There's really just one hadith that I want to speak about for a few minutes. But this hadith is a beautiful hadith and it's a profound hadith and it's a hadith that I tell people all the time. If there's one hadith that I want to have hanging on my wall that I look at every day, it is this hadith. If there's one that I turn into a magnet and I put on my fridge, if there's one that I look at every day as a key to success, it's this hadith. It's three points. I want you to write down the three points. I want you to then turn it into a magnet, put it on your fridge, put it on your wall, share it with other people. It is keys to success. When you're talking about living your legacy, the Prophet Sallallahu mentions three points. And in fact, I even have this hadith as the cover of my notebook. Rasulullah Sallallahu says in the hadith that's reported by Muslim, it's the hadith of Abu Hurairah. He simply says, Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. Wasta'in billah wa la ta'jis. It is amazing. He says, Focus on what benefits you. And seek the help of Allah. And don't give up. These three things, keys to success in every field of endeavor. Number one, he says, focus on what benefits you. And the ulama say that the secret of this phrase is that letter kaf. Because that kaf means you. What benefits me is different than what benefits you. And what benefits you is different than what benefits your sister. What benefits you is different than what benefits your brother. What benefits you is different than what benefits the community. I remember Shaykh Sa'di, rahimahullah, I was reading his debate, talking about occupations. People ask the question, young people ask, what career should I go into? And he mentions the scholarly debate about what is better, to be a merchant or to be a farmer? Because merchants have incredible reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who's an entrepreneur relies upon Allah at a way that is different than a person who is an employee. You start to become dependent on your paycheck. But a person who every day is going out into the market, you know, it's, it's commonplace in many Muslim countries, store owners, that they begin their day by saying, Ya Fattah, Ya Alim. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open up the doors of risk for them. You never know where your risk is coming from. You're seeking it out. Your heart is attached to Allah. And then you're looking at the farmer and the farmer is waiting on rain and you have these prayers for rain that every agricultural society has. Atheism doesn't grow on farms, it grows in cities where they don't know where their watermelons come from. They think it comes from the local grocery store. The farmer is very attuned to nature and they're very attuned to the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who brings them rain. And if that rain does not come, the vegetation doesn't grow. So which one is better? And so Shaykh Sa'di says the answer to that is in this hadith. Ihris ala ma yanfa'uka. Focus on what benefits you. For some people, going out and buying and selling and trade, that is what's better for them. And for some, agriculture is better. Your career path, it's all about where you benefit. And even when it comes to Islamic work, where do you find your spirituality? There are some people, truly, they find their spirituality in sitting in classes like this and learning and taking notes and memorizing and reading Quran. And there are some people, don't we all know people, who that is not where they find their spirituality. They would much rather go out and volunteer in the streets and feed the homeless and take care of, of people. That is where they find their iman. And one is not better than the other. Everyone is supposed to go and find what benefits them. So what is your superpower? Every single one of us has a unique combination of talents and gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave. When I first started speaking, a brother of mine, a good friend of mine, he sat down with me and he said, Ammar, what's your superpower? I said, what do you mean? I have zero superpowers. He said, no, I mean, what's your unique talents that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you? Because if I tried to be like a academic, I'm not an academic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't make me like that. So if I tried to sound like an academic and act like an academic, it wouldn't have worked for me. And if I try to be like this incredibly emotional sheikh, that's not me. I can't be that person, but I am a poet, and that's, that's how Allah made me. And I do like to study Islam, that's how Allah made me. And so I have my merging of lanes, and every single one of us has that combination. But you can't be somebody that you're not, you can only be who you are and focus on what benefits you. Find your superpower. And then Rasulullah says, 
and seek the help of Allah. You know, all of these self-help books, they'll tell you to focus on what benefits you and they'll tell you how to goal set. But they won't tell you the second ingredient that the Prophet Sallallahu says, and that is to seek the help of Allah. No matter how big your aspirations are, no matter how big your goals are, if Allah doesn't say yes, it will always be a no. Rasulullah Sallallahu says, seek the help of Allah. While you are going out and seeking that degree, also seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if Allah says yes, then you're gonna get that degree. If Allah says yes, that project is going to be successful. If Allah says yes, that business is going to be successful. Make sure that you are asking Allah even more than you're asking people for assistance because He is the one who has the keys. Ibn al-Qayyim says something very, very profound and very beautiful in ad dawah -da he says, that if you find yourself raising your hands to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in that moment, you should be happy because Allah did not inspire you to ask except because He wanted to give you. How many people do you know are broke? And they talk to everybody about being broke. The only one who they don't ask, they don't ask to, to, to enrich them is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many people are single, they're looking to get married and they talk to this Imam and that Imam and this person and that person and they're swiping left and swiping right and swiping up and swiping down and they're not asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them rizq. Ibn al-Qayyim says, if you find yourself making dua, then in that moment you should be happy because Allah did not inspire you to ask except because He wanted to give you. Allah says, Ujibu da'wat al-da'i idha da'an. I respond to the call of the caller when they call upon me. And then number three, Rasulullah sallallahu says, Wala ta'jaz, don't give up. I figured out what my goal is. I'm asking Allah, I'm begging Allah, I'm going after it. Then don't give up. And if you were to look at everybody who is successful, everybody, you will find that they are different in their talents, they're different in their resources, they're different in everything. The one common factor that they have is that they were persistent. Four businesses failed, their fifth one was successful. They were persistent. Will Smith has a story. I don't know if we're allowed to mention Will Smith at an Islamic conference, but Will Smith has a story where he was 12 years old and his dad had him and his brother build a wall. And he said, this is one of the most important lessons I learned in my life, that every day in that summer, his dad would have them go out and he said, you don't build a wall by building a wall, but you just work on placing a brick as beautifully as a brick can be placed every day. And you keep doing that every day until you build a wall. LeBron James, I watched this interview of uh, Kevin Love. One of the most, LeBron James is one of the most talented basketball players of all time. And Kevin Love is, is being asked, what is the most unique quality that LeBron has? Guess what he said? his ability to do it all again tomorrow. That's persistence. Always, always showing up. In every field, every field of human endeavor, you will find the common quality to be persistence. There is a child psychologist, his name is Dr. Leonard Sachs, written a lot of books. I remember one time he gave a lecture to our Muslim community in Houston. This was during COVID. And he said, we researched what makes people successful and we found that the most important quality that they developed was their discipline by the age of 12. That you're able to divide a long goal into daily tasks that you're able to do until you get to that goal. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, no one has been given anything more comprehensive or better than sabr. What is sabr? We translate sabr as patience, but sabr is way bigger than patience. Sabr is discipline and dedication and resilience and perseverance and grit. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that if you want to achieve any goal that you have in your life, these are three things. Focus on what benefits you, seek the help of Allah, and number three, don't give up, persevere until you get to where you're going. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَبْرِ وَالصَّلَةِ Sabr is la ta'jaz, it's don't give up, it's persevere, it's endure, it's be resilient. And salah is you turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu, wa attaqu allaha la'allakum tuflihoon. Allah says, O oh, you who believe, endure, have patience, hold fast. These three qualities are all about don't giving up, don't, not giving up. And then he says, wa attaqu allah, have taqwa of Allah, turn to Allah. 
So, final thing I want you to walk away with, simply this. Focus, pray, persist. Focus, pray, persist. Say it with me. Focus, pray, persist. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.